How's it going guys? One of the comments we got on our last video was asking how we um, focus on the finer details in our groove. So we've got a track that we've just started. Um, it's in the fairly early stages, but I thought now would be a good time to make the video whilst there's not too much going on really. So yeah, I hope it answers your question. But yeah, so we're going to look at basically groove, swing um, and stuff that we consider when we're making a like a drum loop, a groove um just to try and keep it interesting and to to try and get it grooving so yeah i hope it answers your question if anyone else has got anything that they're struggling with then let us know um and yeah we'll try and help best we can um if you find it helpful in any way then make sure you let us know in the comments cheers guys so yeah um in this one the question was yeah like how we look at the the, the smaller details to, to make the groove um so yeah, this is something that I've just started um, and I want to do the video now before um, it gets too far along and maybe there's, do you know what I mean, there's, there's too many channels to kind of really see what's going on. So there's not too many channels at the minute. Um, so yeah, I'm going to just run through some things that we look at um, when we're trying to create a groove. I'll just let you listen what it sounds like to start with. So that's pretty so that's pretty much it. Um there's not that much variation at the minute. Um, I basically just duplicated the loop, loop along, um, but yeah, um, in terms of groove, so I'll start at the top, um, the kick, obviously, yeah, that's just straight, everything's kind of just is what it is with the kick, um, the, these little fills, so all I've done here is basically yeah frozen flatten that to get um the audio from there and then actually i'll just show you the the kick actually because um if you don't know about punch box quite a good um kick tool so it's basically just a 909 kick basically um just tuned to the key of the track and then yeah i've um exported it down here and then yeah, with these, I've basically just moved them around a little bit so that they're not straight on the grid. So if I change that to 16th notes so you can see. So yeah, it should be there. Well, you'd normally put it there. Um, but yeah, that's just moved slightly off. So the fades, obviously like that one there is a bit shorter than that one. Um, yeah, just kind of make it sound a little bit different really. Um, but yeah, in terms of the groove, obviously like these notes being moved around is what's going to give you that really. Um, and then yeah, the bass, same again with the bass, the only difference with that obviously, so this one here we've got shorter notes and notes that have been moved. And then on this bass line, Obviously, we've got those two things again, so some shorter notes, some notes that's been moved. But then on this bass line, we've also got um, changing volume as well, which also adds to the groove. So, um, yeah, that's one little extra thing um, in the bass line. So what I will... I've looped that for some reason... One thing to mention, obviously, like, there is the groove pool on the left, which sometimes I use it, to be fair, like, it is good. Um, and, yeah, I, a lot of the time I'll, I'll usually start off, if unless I'm in, in a rush or whatever, I'll usually start off just moving things around. Um, myself seeing seeing what what's working with this one yeah it was just a case of just moving them around a little bit um to get the groove myself so like the way that i look at it is if i had a bass guitar now 
and I was playing it in real life, what would it look like on the grid? Um, and in fairness, like I probably haven't even moved them around that much. So with this, I've only moved like like a selected few notes. So so with groove, um, basically it's generally. Let me just try and show you. So obviously, if I just loop this little bit here. So obviously like in this little this little loop now obviously we've got four sixteenth notes within that like one kick region if you get me and like generally like where you're gonna get your swing is gonna be the second note and this fourth note so like on the on this track I haven't actually moved the first um, and the third but obviously like if you were playing a really basic guitar those notes wouldn't be bang on either so like yeah, for this one I haven't moved those, but yeah, like I, I would sometimes just do you know what I mean? Like move that slightly forward, move that slightly back, and that way obviously you're kind of trying to emulate a little bit more like someone's actually playing an instrument, um, and yeah, just experiment with it really um, is the only thing. But yeah, um, so yeah, the on this one, as you can see on that one there. It's the second note and the fourth note really that I've that I've that I've swung, just moved them um around. Um so yeah, that's pretty much it for the bass line. Let's put it back. So, and to be honest, like, in terms of, like, the groove, those are, like, the main things that I look at, really, is, like, the changes in volume with the velocity, like, the, the note length and where they're positioned. And, like, that's kind of going to be what's going to get you your groove. Obviously, like, there's a few different ways to do it. Like, that way there, just moving the notes around is one way. So, yeah, this... Um, bass patch it's in the operator video that I did but I've also included this one just as like a little extra one because it's one that um, I use a lot as well so um, yeah I'll include the link to that in the description so um, if you want that then it'll be, be in there but yeah other than that in terms of groove on here nothing much else obviously some like sound design based stuff but um, in terms of groove, that's about it for that. Same with the the mid bass. Um, I've basically yeah just du duplicated those notes over, and it's just a slightly higher higher sound, just to complement uh, the bass line. But yeah, nothing different in terms of like any notes or anything on that one than there is on that one. Um, so then yeah, um, again with with like drum sounds so like you can see here like none of them are really in the same place so yeah i just kind of like move things around a little bit just so that they're not like bang on straight because obviously like we're using claps here but if it was a snare from a drum um you just it's never going to be like right right on it so like yeah, with everything, I just try and move it off a little bit just because you're never going to really get that. Um, and then, yeah, like some of the volumes are probably tweaked a little bit. In fact, one thing that I might have done on here... No, I haven't. So sometimes with the clap, I like just change the pitch like slightly as well, just... Um, because again, like even with like drum sounds and that, like on the snare, if you hit it in a slightly different place, you're gonna get a slightly different sound. So like with the drum sounds, when I'm putting them in, I'll always try and think about right, how can you make each one sound a little bit different? Obviously, even if it's a little bit quieter or a little bit louder, or just slightly off. Um, and then yeah, I kind of feel as though you try and get a little bit more of a 
a natural sound to it really um don't think there's anything else with the clap other than yeah so obviously what i like to do i've got like a high clap there like a medium one and then like a snare underneath so yeah if you look at like a Stick that up as we're doing it. So you've got that medium one there. That high one, it's like a little bit bit more in the higher frequencies there. And then you've got this one, which has got the weight down here. Um, at this stage, I haven't really tweaked them that much. Um, so I'll probably, like, later, later down the line, I'll probably, like, mix them a little bit more and tweak the EQ so that they really fit nicely. But at the minute, um, I'm just going to leave them like that. But... Yeah, that's pretty much all to mention on that, really. And then the conga. So, again, just don't think I've changed the velocities too much on them. Oh, yeah, so they're both the same. But, yeah, the velocities, they've moved slightly. Um, and then, so Echo Boy. In terms of like delay and echo like echo boy is mint because it's got this swing so like yeah you can basically swing your delay which just gives that extra little bit of groove um so yeah that's probably the only real thing to mention on that let me see if i've done anything else no i think that's pretty much it What's a frequency shifter? So, yeah, with sounds like this, like, if you have a look on here, like, it's got a definitive note. So, like, some people don't like to tune their percussion, but with a sound like this, I personally think that you kind of should because, like, you can't argue that there's definitely a note playing there. So... If that note isn't in your like scale or it's sounding slightly wrong with with another note that's playing in something else, I just think personally it's easier to just make sure that it is. And like I've always found that things sound a little bit better um, when you tune the percussion. Like some sounds, so like some sounds you won't bother with. So these claps, although the snare I might have done because the snare. Like a snare a lot of the time has got like a kind of fundamental note that you can hear more than anything else. So yeah, I've probably looked at this little bass note down here um, and done that. But yeah, may maybe that's something for another video. But in terms of the groove on this one, the main thing is the Echo Boy. Um, and then yeah, it's just swung a little bit. And then, so... Even though I've moved the notes, like, obviously, like, I've done that. So, I, like, I probably didn't really need to do that. But if you've if you've not really ever took any notice of the track delay section here, like, it's dead, dead useful. Like, yeah, just offsetting things slightly. Like, even if you've already tweaked your notes a little bit and moved them around... Like, most of the time, you'll find that there'll be a sweet spot. And if you move that track delay just a little bit, you'll just find that perfect spot where it just sounds a little bit better. So, yeah, just probably, yeah, the first point you call is move the move the notes and then um, the track delay, which will just, like, really fine-tune and get it, get it where you need it. Um, so, yeah, nothing else mentioned on the conga. And then... The clave is pretty much the same. What I've done on, on here is... So, yeah, in, in this simpler, you've got this LFO that you can turn on and off. So, to be fair, you could do this in another way. I, I just do it this way. But this pitch, so I've changed the, the LFO shape. 
to this noise one here where it's just all random. Um, you, you could have a different wave if you want. You could have a sine wave, so it's like more of a smoother change. But um, I go with that one just so that it's a bit more kind of instant with when your note's going to change. And then, yeah, I, I drag this all the way down to the lowest it'll go. And then this pitch, what it'll do, so if I turn that all the way up, it's basically... It's going to play a different pitch for your notes. Obviously, like you wouldn't want it on a hundred day, what like, like that is. But if you pull it down, so I'll put it on zero. Like if you just so I usually have it on about two percent, and like you can't even really notice it. If I didn't tell you it was on, you probably wouldn't know. But then when I turn it off, you will know. You'll be like, oh yeah, that sounds more samey than what it does with it on. So like changing the pitch of things, I think is, is like a big thing to try and keep the sound interesting and not just so that it's the same sound playing over and over again. Um, so yeah, that there, there's nothing really extra than we haven't spoke about. Echo Boy, it's gonna have, um, it's gonna have that groove on there. Just LFO tool to duck it and reverb. Nothing new there. Speak about that envelope in a different one, actually. Um, might have actually put that too high now, but. So, actually, maybe on this one as well. So, yeah, on this clave. So we've basically got like a little polyrhythm going on. So obviously, usually you're working in like even numbers in terms of like your beats and your bars and that obviously like within one bar. So if we turn that. So when you change this loop length to an odd number, so I've put it down to three there. Basically, yeah, you're creating a, a polyrhythm where it's like not in time with the rest of the track. So like, yeah, it can just make this loop sound like you've made like, so where does it actually start repeating? So yeah, I think it starts repeating. I'm not sure to be fair, but yeah. Anyway, like, yeah, changing the loop lengths is another little way to kind of keep things interesting um all these are pretty straight actually i'd probably oh no so i've i've moved moved the track delay on that instead of moving the notes um so yeah that's it for that sound there really i don't think there's anything extra here yes same thing again um with that sound there Um, and then, yeah, with, with high hi hats as well, like just slightly move that. That one's moved forward. That one's on. That one's on. That one's slightly behind. Like the volumes are a tiny little bit. It's like tiny little changes in the volumes. Um, you, you wouldn't even notice it to listen to, but like the tiny little things, like your ears do pick up on them, even though you don't realize that they do. Um, so, yeah, I put. So, yeah, one thing that's different about this is that what I've done with. So, on a delay of this one. Obviously, on, on those other percussion channels, I put an Echo Boy with with the groove. Um, but on this one, I've done, if you watched the, the last tips video where you, you do the dry and wet separate, basically, we've got this dry signal here now that's just completely dry. And then the wet signal, which is separate. So, basically... When you do that, 
now I can put f effect on just this wet channel without it affecting my hat. So I've got this little um, filter freak on there. So if I turn that off, that's what it sounds like. It's just quite samey, really. That's the, just the delay now. And if I turn the filter freak on, you just get just a little bit different. But obviously, like, if I would have put that filter freak on the full channel, which, do you know what I mean? Like, sometimes I would do. You can do that anyway. But obviously, then I'd be affecting the main hat, which for this I didn't want to do. So that's why, yeah, this little thing where you duplicate the wet down, um, it's cool because, yeah, you can put effects onto your wet signal and not affect the dry signal. Um so yeah, hopefully that makes sense. Um, this little open hat. Say everything that we've mentioned before. I think the only thing with this is just that there's a little pitch bend. So obviously, like, yeah, just sounds a bit different. Just a little bit higher pitched. It's like the same principle with the drums, really. Like if you hit it in a slightly different place, like it's going to sound a little bit different. Um, so yeah, just, just play around with the pitch and stuff. And then, yeah, just move the, the track delay. One of these has got something slightly different than what we've already spoke about. Yeah. So this tambourine, so everything else is the same that we spoke about the volumes, moving the notes, but the difference with this one is that I've turned this envelope on. So, well, I say turned it on. So I basically turned this velocity up. So basically what it will do is where we've put our volume kind of changes in, rather than it just being the volume that changes, it will also be a filter. So like this sound here, because it's quieter, will also be slightly filtered. If that makes sense. I'll just, I'm just going to let you listen to it actually. So if I turn that all the way up, actually, you will hear it more. So, so that note there obviously is a quiet one. You'll hear the filter come on. It's like a really, it's a lot lower sound. So yeah, with that just kind of tweaked to the right amount. Again, it's just like gives the sound a little bit more, a little bit more, more movement. So it's just not the same. And then yeah, everything else we've already done. Another shaker, well, or a shaker. Yeah, we spoke about that. Um, so the wet signal again, it's just got a filter freak on, on it. It's just, just, just moving it a little bit. And then it's got an auto pan on it. Um, I think that's pretty much it, to be honest. Um, in terms of like making a groove, like those are the things that, that I really look at is, yeah, the stuff that, we just spoke about so yeah like moving the notes the volume the length of the notes um and yeah just try and imagine do you know what i mean if you were playing this drum kit and you had the shaker in your hand like what would it actually sound like rather than just like programming the the notes in and just yeah thinking that it'll sound real when um yeah think about how you can get it to just move a little bit um these chords and stuff in terms of groove i don't think so echo boy will have groove on it as well but um these i've kept pretty straight um so i might as well carry on with these actually so yeah with 
these chords, just stuff moving all the time. So this this filter just moving a little bit. The envelopes turned up so that like the highs still come through. What else have we got? We've got a filter freak, which yeah, so filter freak's really good for just creating little slight differences in your sound. In fact, if we turn all that stuff off and just see what it sounds like. So yeah, hear it without that stuff and it sounds pretty boring. It's just the same, the exact same sound every time, but then when you turn them on, I don't think I had the chorus on, I didn't have that on either. Yeah, it just makes it sound a little bit different, even though it's the same sound. Um, track delay, I've moved on that. Um, this sound here, I'm not 100% on at the minute. Um, just recorded it in with the Minilog, but probably needs a bit of work on that, to be fair. But yeah, with that one, so if you've got any like live synths, synths or whatever, like if you play it in live, obviously then you have got a live instrument that you're playing. So if you're playing something in live, obviously sometimes your timing can be like way off. So you might want to move it a little bit, but try not to, if you're playing something, just like press quantize and then make it all snap back to the grid because like that's not what, like if you were playing, do you know what I mean? In a, in a band or whatever, and you were doing it live, that's not what would happen. So if you're recording something in, try and leave it as best you can like if you've got it way off and yeah just pull it a little bit like back on time but like don't just press quantize and like sync it to the, the grid because you're going to lose that kind of feel that you had when you were playing it like um yeah same again with these just it was on the middle log just a little stabby sound it's got delay on there um i think we've pretty much covered everything you know um this sound again it's just the same note but it's just like like getting pitched up and down a little bit um yeah just a little background thing and then this which it's actually me which i'm not sure whether i'm keeping it in yet but um yeah that's pretty much it really so yeah, that's it for this one. Um, but if anybody's got any suggestions on stuff that they're struggling with, um, then let us know. And yeah, if we think we can help in any way, then we'll make another video. Um, what what we might do is maybe make another video um, of this track when it's a bit further along. Um, maybe some arrangement stuff, possibly. Um, but yeah, hope it's helped in some way. Let us know in the comments. Yeah, cheers, guys.